Guess what time it is? Friday Jams! Well, hey, 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 what's up, everyone? Welcome to the Rock Your Brand Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Boker, a serial entrepreneur on a mission to help you. This show is designed to teach you, to inspire you, to motivate you, to take massive action and build a future-proof business. So whether you're just starting out or taking your existing business to the next level, this is your home. Now, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's rock your brand. What's up, everyone? Welcome to this Friday Jam Session. Super excited you're here. And if you haven't heard me say it before, I'm going to say it right now. This is probably one of the highlights of my week because I get to hang out with some cool people every single Friday and answer some really awesome questions. Now, you might be asking, Scott, how do I get my question answered? Well, all you need to do is become part of our Take Action crew. How do you do that? Very easy. Head on over to TakeActionCrew.com. It's totally free, and we do it every single Friday, and it is a blast. So what you're about to listen to is one that we did last week. So this way here, even if you can't attend, you can always show up here to the Rock Your Brand podcast and listen to our live jam session. All right, guys, so sit back, relax, and let's jam. All right, guys, welcome back to another Friday jam session. That's what we're going to be doing here today. And this is one of the highlights of my week because I get to hang out with some people here that are live that are going to be jamming with me live. But also for anyone that is listening to this later, I want to imagine that we are in a room together with a cup of coffee or tea or beverage of choice. Doesn't matter. I'm having coffee. And if you guys are watching this, you guys can see that I have my bulletproof here. But what I want to do today is I want to do what we do every single Friday and we open up, we open up the questions. And we're going to start with the topic in mind because this topic I've been talking about here recently and actually yesterday I was on like four uh, coaching calls and uh, each one of those we pretty much talked about this right here and that is product launches. What does it look like for a product launch or Scott, I want to launch a digital product. What does that look like? I want to launch a digital course. How do I do that? Should I do that? Uh, so those are some questions that I want to answer, and I'm going to start that. We're also then going to open up the floor for you guys that are watching here live, and then if you're listening to this on the podcast, you can listen, and if you want to attend one of these live Friday jam sessions, then all you need to do is head over to TakeActionCrew.com. Again, that's TakeActionCrew.com. That'll take you to the Facebook page, and that is where we'll be streaming live and also on YouTube. All right, so... With that all being said, let's dig in. One of the one of the things I, I think that people want to do is they, and again, who doesn't, right? We want to try to monetize as quickly as possible. So you guys have been hearing me talk a lot about creating content. It's evergreen, creating uh, digital uh, assets like something like a lead magnet or a digital asset that will lead people back to the blog content or your website, which would be Pinterest, right? So those are the things. So we have we have content creation that's going to bring in traffic eventually, takes time, right? We have one post right now that took almost seven months before it started to show its face, and now it's starting to really do well, all right? So that's number one, right? Content creation takes time. The Pinterest side of things, we can start to, to get attention there quicker, but then we're going to get the attention, drive it over to our website, and then we want to build our list. But now with those assets, okay, what a lot of us don't understand is that a product launch, okay, if you have, let's talk about a digital product now. If we have a digital product, now if you don't have a digital product, a very simple way, and I actually gave this advice yesterday to, I believe it was John, I gave it to Octavio, uh, I gave it to Karen, um, trying to think who else, maybe it was just those three. No, actually, uh, there was, um, uh, Tolan was the other one, right? So every single person I gave this exact formula and it looks like this. What is the one thing that your market wants and needs right now? Okay. What does it want and need? We can turn that into a digital funnel in a sense that could lead to money a lot quicker. Okay. So again, starting this conversation off with like doing a product launch, you first need a product, right? So if you don't have a product, your first thing is like, how do I get the product? 
How do I test different products? Well, if you're doing physical products, it's going to be a little bit harder, right? Because we have to actually get the product, get it in hand, and then we have to let people know about it. And then from there, we got to try to get attention to it, right? We're going to use paid traffic, whether that's on Amazon, pay-per-click traffic, whether it's our email list, whether it's Google ads, uh, any of that stuff, right? We got to be able to get eyeballs on it, right? So that's a little bit harder. But if you do have a physical product, don't worry. This is going to help you today as well, all right? But let's go back. Okay, so the people that are right now currently creating content, what you could do is number one, let's pretend you don't have an email list right now. Okay. Let's just pretend that the first thing that I would do is I would say, okay, what are the, what are the six things, 10 things, whatever that someone needs to know to get a result or to help them in whatever they're trying to do. Now this could be templates. This could be downloads. This could be uh, you know, a cheat sheet, it could be any of that stuff, but what you want to do is you want to map out what is that? Okay. What does that look like? Now, once you do that, you're going to then create blog posts or written content or videos that are going to address that one part in that topic or in that six part thing, right? So what we're doing is we're really building a product but we're also creating content. So we are publishing, stay with me here, all right? We are basically publishing, let's say part one, all right, on a blog post. Then a week later, we do part two. And then the next week we do part three. And at the end of it, it might be six parts. It might be 10 parts. Well, guess what? Now we can take those blog posts and we can bundle them up and make a nice little pretty ebook. Now we've got a product. All right. Now you might say, well, Scott, how do I sell that? I'm putting it on my website for free. You are, but also people want it so they can download it. They also want it in a, in a better form, maybe, right? They want it in a PDF or maybe they want, uh, because inside of that also, my recommendation would be to then take that blog post. Just don't copy and paste it in there. You want to add some new things to it. Not a whole bunch, but you want to add some screenshots. You want to add some images. You want to add some additional resources. Not hard to do. The framework is there. But now you have this digital asset, okay? So now once we have this digital asset, we can say, how do I launch this digital asset, right? How do I launch this thing for 10 bucks, for 20 bucks, right? How do I do it? The next part of this equation, let's say we don't have an email list yet. We need to find out what is one thing that will give them a result or give them a quick win, all right? Let me use an example here because I think James is on still. Um, so James, okay, he has a, uh, or he is going to teach guitar, right? Teach guitar lessons, okay? So for James, the way it would be like, it'd be like, okay, let me figure out what is, what is a song that people want to learn in the style that I want to be able to teach, right? So let's say it's in heavy metal guitar, right? And, and, uh, I am going, or even just hard rock. Let's say it's an ACDC song. Cause I know James had mentioned ACDC. So let's just say ACDC. We know that people, uh, they want to learn how to play, uh, back in black. Right. And so you would then create that as your lead magnet, right? That would be, Hey, here is the rhythm lick to back in black, learn it in 10 minutes or less, right? Boom. I want to know that. Okay. So now once I put that out there, I can put it out on my Facebook page. I can let, you know, just uh, social media know about it. Or if I build an email list, this is where it comes in. I'm going to be able to let them know about it, or I can start building my email list with that lead magnet. Now, once I do, guess what? I might have done seven, eight, maybe 10 different lessons on maybe doing the whole album, or maybe it is a mix bag of like different artists, right? And so now what I could do is I could do that behind the scenes, as I was telling you, right? Like maybe 10 different songs, I bundle that up and now that's worth $9.99. Who wouldn't spend $9.99 on a full book showing me how to play all of those songs with tablature and maybe there's gonna be a video that's going to accompany it, right? Yes, it resides on your blog, but you're also now going to bundle that. So now we have a lead magnet, leads people in. And then from there on the thank you page, we would then say, 
hey, we just sent you your, uh, you know, your quick lick to uh, be able to play back in black. But before you go, get our full collection of hard rock classics for just $9.99, 50% off for the next 30 minutes, right? So that thank you page is a way for us to then sell something. Okay, so the quickest way to launch a product would be that way if it's a digital product. Again, we got to have the digital product. We got to we got to know what people want, by the way, right? So we can do that by just again fielding questions, doing our research, right, and then building out that content. Okay, so again, that's a perfect example, right? Now, the other thing is, let's say that I wanted to uh, do a different song because another song was pretty popular too. Then I could create that as a secondary lead magnet, right? And I'm not a big fan of getting multiple, multiple, uh, you know, different lead magnets, magnets out there because it does complicate things. But in your market, it might be good to go out and have three different songs that all lead back to that same thank you page, right? And then from there, you can sell a $9.99 book, right? Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but you sell 10 a day, that's a hundred, that's hundred bucks, right? And it's a digital product. You don't have to worry about inventory or none of that stuff. Take it a step further. Now we can also maybe over the, over the next six months, you're going to build out maybe three of these eBooks, right? Now, when you get those done, now we can add that also to what we call an order bump, right? So now what that does is it gives people first things free. Second thing is a one-time offer for 50% off to get the collection edition. And then the order bump would be $25 gets all four, something like that, or four more, something like that, right? That's what we call a digital funnel. Okay. It's not a major course. It's not a whole video series that you got to hurry up and create and all of that stuff. Right. And it's a great way to test it. So in order to launch that, you would then, you would drive Facebook ads to that, right? You would just drive Facebook ads to that, right? You'd find, uh, you know, uh, guitar magazine, people that follow that. Uh, if you already have an email list, you can upload that. So the way to launch that would be just drive traffic to it. It'd be paid traffic. But if you have your own website traffic, that's where it gets really fun because now what we can do is we can just put a header banner on our website and say, this week we're launching our, our, uh, you know, our free, uh, guitar lesson pack. And then on the back end of that, there would be some ways to make money. So that's how I would launch a digital product this way here. You're not trying to construct this whole entire major course. You're just building out content on your website. And then when you get it completed, you're turning that into a digital product. All right. So now let's talk about once you build that email list, now we can talk about launching other products. Okay. Cause once we build the email list they we know that they got in because we, they wanted the guitar training in hard rock, by the way. Now I wouldn't say give them a classical piece and then try to upsell them or sell them, you know, a hard rock piece, not going to be aligned. Right. So you got to know what that next thing is. It's more usually of what they already got. And that one quick win is just going to kind of, kind of give them that thing and go, Oh, I like James. He really knows how to teach me. I'm going to go ahead and get more from him right now. If they don't purchase, that's where the email sequence comes in because then we can follow up with them. But the cool thing is this will also allow you to really move fast when you want to create new products, because now you can, and I, I mentioned this to Karen yesterday, you want to reach out to your email list and say, what is, uh, what is one song that you want to learn that you've been trying to learn that you just are having a tough time with, right? Or what is a, what is something that you're struggling with playing guitar? Maybe it's that simple. Uh, it's maybe it's scales. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's cross picking. Maybe it's finger picking, right? And once you start to get these answers, you're going to come out with some content that's going to answer that problem. It's also going to turn into a product, right? So that's how we launch. We don't necessarily go, oh, I think this is going to be a great product. Uh, and I'm just going to, I'm going to make one of those products and sell it, right? You're not guessing as much here, right? We're, we're doing what we know the market most likely wants because we've got data. And then from there, we're going to build it. Now, a physical product, again, is going to be a little bit harder. But if you're, if you have a physical product, number one, you want to build an email list. You, you, you want to build an email list because with that email list, you can then do what I've talked about is you want to build the runway. When you're building the runway, 
maybe four weeks out, maybe two weeks out, whatever, whatever you want to do, I would say at least two weeks out. And then you just want to start dropping hints that you're going to be doing something and then also following up with, you know, good content, but also dropping in there. Right? So for you guys right now, you're listening or you're watching this. And you're going to hear me say right now, which if you've been on any of these coffee talks in the past couple of weeks, you've heard me say we've officially announced that we're opening Brand Creators Academy on July 6th. So you see what I just did there? I set I set the seed, right? I set it there. So this way here, you're like, you know what? Scott, let me know. And then tomorrow, guess what? I'll mention it again. And the next day I'll mention it again, but I'm just dropping it in there. You might be marking your calendar right now because you've tried to get in before because we only open four times a year, right? So July 6th. So now I'm talking about this right now, helping you with like a product launch. Well, inside of Brand Creators Academy, that's also what we're helping our members with, which we actually have plans to do a full out, like build a digital funnel and then record it all. Um, so that's also something that we're working on, which I'm pretty excited about. So I would say if you are at all like thinking to yourself, man, it just seems like it's going to take me so long to build out content. In the meantime, you could be building out your content, but building a digital asset that you could sell right alongside it, right alongside it. You just need to plan that. And then you need to come out with part one, part two, part three, part four, or maybe just, you don't even have to call them part this part that it's just, this is the first step. That's the second step. That's the third step. And then you just build that out a great way to see what that would look like is you would just want to go and find a Kindle book that's selling right now in your market and then look at the chapters. Those are the sequences of events that have to happen to help someone with this. All right. So that's, that's it in a nutshell, guys. So hopefully that helped you guys. Now let's open it up for your questions. All right. And I'm going to scroll through here just a little bit. Uh, okay, cool. Here we go. We have, okay. Salama says, email and other content sequence for a launch. Okay, so the sequence looks like this. Okay, it's very simple. You want to make it known through an email that you have something coming, right? And a simple way of doing this is just like, you know, I've, uh, you know, I've been working on, well, first off, let me time up, back out, you know, back out of that for a second. What you want to do is you want to first lead with asking them a question of what they want to learn more about or know more about, or what do they need help with that becomes the product by the way. So if you're just going to throw something out there, cause you're excited about creating something that's fine, but you better make sure that you've already validated that those people want it. So that's first step. Second step is, Hey, after I asked the, the question of, uh, you know, what was the one thing that you're struggling with playing guitar? Uh, a lot of you said that it was, uh, it was doing scales and I'll tell you what, you know, um, that's maybe a certain guitarist, maybe, uh, you know, uh, Joe Satriani is just a great scale, uh, scale guy. And what I've decided to do is put together some free training for you that shows you some of these scales and it's actually, br I break it down. So it's su super simple to do. Um, so, you know, that's how you would do that. Right. And then you would lead them to that, but then also you might be coming out with the ultimate scale guide, right. And that's going to be the product, but you need to know what the product is before you actually start to kind of place the seeds. But then every email isn't going to be like, Oh, by the way, seven days before I launch my course, then the next one, Hey, uh, five days before I launch my course. No, it's always helping them with something around that thing. Right? So when I was doing the Pinterest traffic workshop and I was talking about that, that whole week I was helping with understanding all about Pinterest traffic, right? And then it just naturally led up to the Pinterest traffic workshop. So again, I've said this before, if you guys want like to see it in real time, you just hang out here, hang out on the jam sessions, but hang out on the coffee talks uh, and just watch because this is exactly what I'm doing right now right? This, uh, this here, you guys can't see it if you're watching this, but the brand creators playbook, right? This book was created by me coming up with the topic and really what does it take to fully build out a brand right now? There's like six sections in here. I can talk about each one of these and always relate it back to the playbook, right? And then the front end of that is the brand growth validation checklist, our little cheat sheet, right? And if you download that, you're going to be able to find and really validate your market within 10 minutes, right? What does that do? Quick win. What does it also get you to do? Once you identify your market, you're like, all right, Scott, show me how to build a brand playbook. You get in the playbook. You're like, this is awesome, but I got more questions. I want to be able to have support monthly. Maybe I'll jump into brand creators Academy. You see how that all tied together. 
right? So just try to study what I'm doing, right? And just try to learn from it. Like, that's it. Like, you can see it in real time. Uh, okay. Uh, do I email you? Okay, so here we go. Uh, James, first question of the day. On YouTube tags, how many should I use? Okay, so now we're going to get a little bit off of product launches, which is totally fine. Um, and if you guys do have any questions on the product launch thing, add them in. Um, but I will answer this for sure. First question of the day. On YouTube tags, how many should I use? I've been doing eight keyword phrases um, uh, as not to stuff. Is that okay? Or should I add more? Uh, I would say as many as, uh, as fits, right? As meaning don't try to stuff them just to stuff them. If you're doing how to learn back in black ACDC, that would be a tag. Um, ACDC back in black, that would be a tag. ACDC back in black rhythm, that'd be a tag. You always want to include the main keys, uh, key C word, keyword in there. If I can talk here. All right. I'm interested in create, and this is Derek, by the way, I'm interested in creation and content for paid membership site and related products and content. The one thing I would say with doing a paid membership right out of the gate is you need to first off know exactly what people want and they would be willing to pay on a regular basis. So it generally would not start with a paid membership. It would start with exactly what I just outlined for you. Okay. It would be figure out what is the solution or the problem that you're going to help people solve. And then from there, create something on the front end that is free that will give them a quick win that will also lead them to want to maybe, you know, do the ebook or do the mini video training for, for 20 bucks or whatever, right? Then you can kind of get yourself rolling. I would never say just start with a membership site, me personally. Now, there's some people that would. I, I wouldn't because it's a whole nother animal. You got to basically manage that and you also need to uh, have support all the time. Uh, and I mean, supporting the members, you want to make sure that they're getting results. You want to make sure that they're getting what is, uh, you know, what is expected of, uh, you know, of what you've promised. Right. So I wouldn't necessarily say go with the membership right out of the gate. I would start with the little mini baby, little digital funnel, and that's going to be a lead magnet. Anyway, that could lead in, see how this here, this all can lead into brand creators Academy, but it doesn't mean it has to start there right? It can start with the front end stuff. And then you're just building an email list and a paid customer list of people that might be interested in the, in the membership. Uh, Derek, should I drip content rather than create a whole course for membership site? I would always say less is more. People think that you want to build this big, robust training. And sometimes it's actually overwhelming and then people won't stay. They're like, I got to just slow down here. Right? So a lot of times it's small bite-sized pieces is going to be a better uh, you know, a better thing there for you. Um, Karen, the biggest takeaway. Okay. So this was from our, our call that we did, uh, yesterday. The biggest takeaway, uh, is I'm going to, or I'm going in the right direction for a moment. I got to see what this could be. We talked about monetizing in ways I did not think about and what I need to do to get there. Thank you for all your help, Scott. It's truly appreciated. Yeah, Karen. And you're, you're set up perfectly for this whole front end offer, you know, free offer to a thank you page that has a, uh, you know, a, a nice small little offer that helps them further. And then a little bit of a bump. And we talked about that. So I think that is your focus. Um, and everything else that you're doing is spot on. So keep it going. Uh, let's see, Salama, would you create a lead magnet that shifts a belief or is that too soft or of a skill and not as valued in the market? Um, okay. Well, yes, I don't. Okay. I think what you're saying is, is should you put out uh, content that gets people to, to understand your beliefs and then kind of like, uh, adopt them. Right. And I think that is good because what it does is it repels people and it attracts people. Right. So we don't want everyone. Right. So if I was to put out content about getting a Lamborghini and, uh, you know, having some, uh, you know, girls hanging all over me and stuff like that's a, that's a different, you know, that's a different person. Like I'm not, I don't want to attract that person. I want to repel that person. Right. So I'm like always talking about family and, and things that are important to me. Right. But then also I'm talking about, you know, there's a hundred different ways that you can build a business online. This is to me by far the best in my opinion, because it's low risk. You can validate way ahead of time and you can do a lot of different things from the traffic. And what I just outlined here today, you can also get to money quicker. If you have the opportunity to build out a small little digital 
mini funnel, if you will, which doesn't have to be complicated. Okay. So, um, I would say, yes, you want one that doesn't necessarily, you, yes, I, I guess shift their beliefs, but makes them realize, wow, okay, that, that makes sense. Like for me to tell you, does it make sense for you to go find a product on Amazon that's selling well, and you look at all the numbers and you do all of the research that you can to say, yes, I think if I launch that product and I make it a little bit better, I will do better than that other person. But I don't know what they're doing to drive sales. I don't know any of that stuff, but I think that I could do it. Right. And that's all that you thought about. You, you source the product, you get it here. It takes you three months. You, you get it here and you launch it. And then you start driving pay-per-click to it and you start to get some sales, but then all of a sudden competition comes in and all that stuff. Right now, what you're sitting with this one product right? That you are thinking to yourself, how the heck am I going to sell this thing? Cause all I have is a product. I don't have a brand. Right. And now I come in and I go, that's one way of doing it, but I would, I would challenge you to do it a different way. I would say, number one, figure out if your market has traffic, not on Amazon. Number one. Okay. Number two, can you sub niche down and still get traffic so we can go and get, uh, you know, get eyeballs without having a lot of competition at first. And then the next thing is, is there content being created? Is there email list captures happening, right? And then are there multiple ways to monetize that without selling just the product on Amazon, right? Now, if I was to do all of that stuff, don't, wouldn't you agree that I'm going to have more chances to monetize than that one product that if it doesn't work, does that make sense, right? Do you agree with that? Now I'm asking you that and maybe you can drop it in the comments, but do you see what I just did there? Now, some people are like, I don't care. I've seen this guy over here and he's got, you know, uh, he, all he does is launch random products and he's doing great. Maybe on the surface, we don't know what he's doing behind the scenes, right? Maybe, maybe not, but you would probably agree that I've got a better chance of having long, uh, sustainable, uh, traffic and potential to sell additional products. Like Right now, instead of me thinking about the next product that I got to source that's, that's going to cost me three to five grand, I can just think about what's the digital product that I could create that I could serve my market. But then if you only started with the product, you might find out that that product can't be, uh, you know, uh, built a brand around. Maybe it's water filters for a uh, frigid air or something, right? Like, I don't know, like maybe it's something as random as that, but the numbers look good, right? So I'm going to sell that, that water filter, right? So I think you would agree that it's probably a better idea to do the other. It makes more sense. So you see what I just did there? I didn't convince you. I just stated my opinions, but also it makes logical sense, right? And then you're like, yeah, you know what? That makes sense. And then you're going to tune back in, right? Or you might be like, no, I just want to find that product and sell it. I don't want to build a brand. Then you're over there, right? That's how it works. All right, let's see here. What else we got? Uh... Okay. Uh, hey, Winston, good morning. Uh, okay, Derek, how deep will you make your uh, selling additional products? Uh, bundle, I think you meant there. It says fundle, but I think it's bundle, uh, selling additional products. How deep will you make your bundle? Uh, so I'm not quite sure what I'm, what you mean by how deep you would make your bundle, um, but I think what you mean is how big would I make it? And it doesn't have to be that big. It just needs to, it just needs to work. It needs to address their, their, uh, their issues and then, uh, come up with that solution. Um, why did you choose a short launch for Pinterest is launch run, uh, runway dependent on the amount of the offer. I like that question and it's a great question. Okay. So what, uh, what Salama is asking here is, uh, we recently did a Pinterest traffic workshop. Okay. And that was something just out of the blue. I said, you know what? We're teaching it inside of Brand Creators Academy. We're going to go ahead and do a pop-up workshop outside of the academy. We'll update all of the training, make it new. And from there, we will also do two live calls. Now, this was a uh, not that expensive of a, of a uh, training. Uh, at the time of me doing this right now, it was $149, right? So not that much for a full course, right? And I've charged uh, anywhere from $1,000 to $2,000 for online courses and done, I, you know, I've done well with those, right? But I've switched it over to now where I want to do the membership after, you know, doing that for many years. It's just, I can focus all my energy there now. That's another topic. But to your point, uh, we did that because we wanted to, number one, help people with that one area. Okay. 
Plus, we also wanted to get people to raise their hand that are interested in building a brand, in this case, Pinterest traffic, but then also they might be interested in joining Brand Creators Academy. So it's a shorter, smaller window, okay, as far as like, it's not that big of a focus for us. We just kind of threw it out there. We didn't have to heavily promote it, you know? And then when we open for Brand Creators Academy, that will become bigger because we have a very short window of time. We only open up for five days every four months. Okay. So there's a, you know, and we don't, we don't go outside of that. So the reason why we then want to really build that out a little bit further is because we only have that limited amount of time. Now I can do a pop-up workshop on that Pinterest again. I don't know in, in another month I can do it if I want to. Um, or I can do another one. Maybe I will do an email list building workshop. We'll do a pop-up and we'll do a mini little, a little launch on that. And then again, but we're always focusing on brand creators Academy members, right? So yes, there is a difference. If you have a bigger launch, it's going to take more, uh, more energy. It's going to maybe take a longer runway. If you're using Facebook ads, because we're going to build custom audiences, there's a lot of that stuff that goes behind it. But if you've never done a launch, I wouldn't go that direction. I would do the little mini digital funnel. Like I just outlined for you guys. Uh, let's see at what point after creating content, do you start selling to them? Well, I guess the, the thing I would ask is let's, let's first figure out what that, what that product would consist of. And I would start with an ebook. I think it's the easiest thing to do. And I think it's, um, it's easy to deliver. And I think people are, they're used to paying anywhere from nine to, uh, you know, $20, uh, to, to buy an ebook, a good ebook. Um, so I think that personally, that's where I would go. So I would just start mapping out my content and I would publish that content on my website. So it serves as two different purposes, right? We're going to get traffic and we're going to be able to then, you know, sell that as a digital product. Um, so that's what I would do there. Uh, let's see. Wow. A lot of questions. Cool. Uh, okay. Is the conversion rate typically low? If you launch your product to an email list from a giveaway, even with nurturing the list beforehand. Uh, so I think Kay, what you're talking about is a physical product. And the answer is yes. Uh, it, it typically is, um, going to be less. And here's why when we're building our giveaway list, we're not necessarily building it just to sell a product. That is a side benefit, but um, it's not necessarily the only reason why we're building that we're building it so we can get attention to our content. We're doing it so we can get feedback so we can ask questions so we can build a course that people want. So there's all of those things, but yes, your conversion rate will typically be lower, but you can, if you do it right is you can do an email sequence that will definitely, um, most likely generate sales if you do it properly. And if you've targeted right on the front end with your giveaway with the right people. Okay. So, um, we would, we would say if you are doing a, um, some type of launch on a product, let's say that it's just a special that you're running, right? Or maybe it's a new brand new product, right? And you, and you have, uh, maybe you have a hundred of them that you're going to discount, right? So what we've done there is we've said, Hey, we got a hundred of these that we're going to discount. They're new to the market. We want to get um, you know, we want to get a hundred people to be able to, to get these in their hand. So what we're going to do is for the next three days, we're going to offer 30% off, but we only have a hundred available at this price, right? Cause that's what you're allowing, right? It's not fake scarcity. It's scarcity and it's real because that's what you're going to do. You're going to limit the amount. And then you would just let them know before it goes live. So maybe one or two emails, letting them know that you're going to be doing this and how awesome the product is and why you created the product and what it helps with. Right. And then you would then say, so be ready on Monday. We're going to, uh, we're going to open this up and the first hundred, uh, we'll get this discount. And then you're going to email on Monday with, you know, basically letting them know that it's, it's up and it's ready. And then Tuesday you're going to email, Hey, just reminding you, you know, letting you know, just in case you missed it, but we, you know, started opening, uh, you know, sales for our new thing. Right. And then you just remind them about that. It ends tomorrow at midnight. And then the last day. You're going to send another email that says deadline, right? Um, last chance to get these at 30% off. And then you probably want to send a fourth email. And I know that's scary for some people, but um, I would say in that promotion in a short, tight window, it's like four emails, um, actually five. If you count the one that's, that's kind of like getting it prepped, right? So a lot of people don't do that. They don't do that whole sequence. And that's why they don't sell their product. You got to be able to sell, but 
You also can't just have the giveaway and go promotion. That won't work. Um, that would actually not work. Um, how long should you nurture your list before selling to them? Would you sell in a thank you email? Yes, I would, I would sell not in the thank you email necessarily. Well, okay. Let me back up. Here's what I would do. Um, I would have that free offer. Okay. The free, uh, lead magnet. And I would even send that to your email list, even though they're on your list, because then what will happen is they will enter their email address again, just to get the thing. They're not going to be added twice to your list. If you're using convert kit. And then from there, you would then send them to a thank you page on that. Thank you page. There would be an offer. Okay. For 50% off of something. Right. And then if they do not purchase that, then what you can do is you can follow up in a separate sequence that basically reminds them of the offer, but also gives them uh, details about the thing that they downloaded. Right. So for me, it would be like uh, you would uh, download the brand growth validation checklist. And then I would follow up with you if you, if you didn't purchase the playbook and I would then mention the playbook, but then I would also say, make sure that you go through step one in the validation process. It's the most critical part because if you do not figure out your niche or your specific sub niche, um, you're not going to be able to validate properly. So make sure you do that. And oh, by the way, if you want the entire process for building your brand, go grab the playbook. You see what we did there? We touch on the, uh, on the, the lead magnet, help them with that, making sure that they downloaded it. Cause a lot of people get it and they're like, oh gosh, I didn't even, I didn't even download it. Right. So you want that. And then on the other side of it is that's where you would, you would sell on the back end. Uh, James question two, I'm on a site. Uh, I do not own. I asked one question and got 220 answers in 24 hours from various people. I'm currently making videos for these questions. I'm allowed to promote my site, YouTube channel, very uh, respectfully. Of course, no spam. How can I draw people to me? So they'll come to my page, get them on your email list lead magnet. That's all that you need to know. So what is something that you can put together that you'll give them for free in exchange for their email address? I would be capitalizing on that right now. Okay. Don't worry about even selling anything right now. If you had something in place, this would be a beautiful uh, situation for that. But if you don't just get the email, right? So what is something that you could create? Is it, is it a, uh, a 30 minute lesson, uh, free lesson that they're going to learn something, give it to them right? Like give them that. Okay. Um, that's what I would do. Collect those emails. Uh, Nemo fishing, uh, setting up a survey monkey account is free and your audience can vote on specific ideas, um, that they are most need of. Yes. The other way to do it is you can just have links inside of your convert kit account and say, Hey, click what, uh, what topic, uh, you'd like to learn more about. And then once they click it, you're going to see the different clicks and how many, uh, clicks each link gets. That's another quick down and dirty way to do it. Geo, what's up? If you put timestamps in your video, Google will index those. Yes. Uh, how do I set up my bonus call with you? Oh, Salama. Um, yeah, you just need, no, there's no deadline for that. Um, yeah, just email me Scott at brandcreators.com. Uh, Salama was one of our 10, our first 10. We had a fast action taker, which is another thing that you guys should always do is have something for the first 10 or five that actually, uh, either purchase something or sign up and then reward them with something. In this case, I offered a 20 minute coaching call. So Salama is going to get going to get one of those. So yeah, that's what you do. Salama. Uh, I totally believe in building a brand. It would be too risky to have one product business. Yeah. And I've seen it happen. I've seen people have a one product business and then they get a claim against them and they can't sell it anymore. I had one guy, actually he's in brand creators Academy and, uh, he had a product. He was stuck with $60,000 because of a patent infringement. That's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty tough one to swallow right there. Uh, is it important to get their email before they get our content, like gate content before they read further only if give, give email, not all the time. No, just a specific lead magnet. That would, that would be it. I, I can't stand when I go on an article and then it says to read more, enter your name and email address. I can't stand that. Um, so no, I don't like that. I like the lead magnet. I like the lead magnet. Uh, Lena, what's up? One win. Oh, okay. A win here. Uh, I got impressions 1.53. So 1,500 total audience, 166 engagements, 18 engaged audience, five with less than two weeks. Pinterest training starting from absolutely zero. Well, that's great news and that's beautiful. So thank you for sharing that. And that's only going to go up. You're going to be doing great. Uh, let's see here. Derek says funnel. Okay. That's what you meant. Funnel. I got it now. Okay. Uh, 
okay, how many upsells will you have on initial product? That's a tricky one. I don't like a whole bunch of upsells. I like to keep it clean and simple. So again, I'm going to, I'm going to do that for you. All right. The very most basic, basic digital funnel that you're going to have is going to be one, an email opt-in that will, uh, that will have people, um, download a, uh, a cheat sheet. Uh, maybe it is, uh, the tablature for the guitar song that they want to play or the guitar notes for the, the, the song that they want to play, whatever it is, right? That's it. The second part is the thank you page, the thank you page. And I, I actually, I went through this with Karen yesterday and Karen, I'm not calling you out, but I'm going to use you as an example. Um, her thank you page was just basically you're now subscribed. Like that was it. Right. And it was just the, the, the typical convert kit standard form. That's premium real estate. We want to do something there. If it's not an offer, give them something else to do. Okay. If you're doing a giveaway, it's like, Hey, thanks for, uh, thanks for signing up to, or joining the contest or submitting the, you know, in the contest. Now what I'd like you to do is share this and get more entries, right? You always want something else to do there. And in this case, we're talking about then possibly selling something on that. Thank you page. It's a great opportunity. Uh, okay. Uh, how, I love how simple your business model is and how easy you make it all seem. Yeah. Well, it's not, it's simple. It's not easy, right? There are things that need to happen, but it's one step at a time, one chunk at a time. Do not try to do it all. Uh, Lydia, approximately what kind of time frame are we looking to get to six figures in this content creating brand creating? What does that look like? Now that's a really that's a really hard question to answer because I think every brand is going to be different. If all you're doing is publishing content and going to just run, uh, you know, Ezoic ads or Mediavine, it's going to take a while. Um, if you have the opportunity to create something like a digital, a little mini digital product, that can happen a lot quicker, a lot quicker. So I would encourage anyone to try to look at their niche and see what they could turn into some type of digital asset or even a training of some kind. Um, again, that would be down the, the line. The simplest way is like I just outlined. That would be your quickest way, by the way, because if we can then, while we're building out our content, we can then, yes, talk about our stuff. We can put up our lead capture form and all of that stuff. And over time, we're going to build our own traffic. But in the meantime, we can start to run Facebook ads um, and then start driving it to our lead magnet. Right. And then once we build the email list, we can do little promotions. And so when we have the email list, it allows us to do promotions on our products or other people's products. So you do, it does speed up that process. So content creation is just one part of the brand building process, by the way. It's not just that's it. Right. Now, if some people, that's all you can do and you just want to build the traffic over time, then do that. Right. But to monetize it, you have to have products in there, affiliate products, your own products or digital products, physical products. And then, uh, you can leverage, uh, ad networks. So that's what I would recommend. All right. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that Friday jam session. And like I said, in the beginning, if you want to attend one of our live Friday jam sessions, all you need to do is head on over to takeactioncrew.com. That is where we show up every Friday, 10 a.m. Eastern time, and you can join us. You can ask a question, and then uh, I can answer it, and we can go ahead and also publish it here on the podcast. So once again, I just want to say thank you so much for listening. This is always one of the highlights of my week, and until next time, remember, I'm here for you, I believe in you, and I am rooting for you, but you have to, you have to, come on, say it with me, say it loud, say it proud, take action. Have an awesome, amazing day, and I'll see you right back here on the next episode. Now go rock your brand.